Hello and welcome to HD Auto. In today's very special episode, we're joined by a very special man, the top boss of Mercedes-Benz India, Santosh Ayer. Thanks Santosh, for joining us. Welcome and thank you for taking the time out and speaking to HD Auto. We have a beautiful palace here in Jaipur in the backdrop and what seems to be a beautiful car in the backdrop as well. The Eki Way is all set for its India debut. Kiran, just before we dwell into the product itself, yeah. talk about Mercedes-Benz India's electric strategy. You had the EQC to set the ball rolling, then you had the likes of EQS, EQB. So, what was the thought process behind a top-down approach as far as EVs are concerned? So, uh, I think it's a good question because if you go back in 2020, uh, just before COVID came, we were the first to introduce an electric car in India uh, in the luxury segment. And that time, the question was, why EV? Uh, you know, from there, I think India has moved a lot. Uh, we then, during this COVID period, again re-strategized because for EQC, we had a lot of customer interest, but we couldn't supply cars at that point of time because of uh, lockdowns and supply chain issues. And then we said, if you want to now go in, uh, what's the best way? And I think uh, the, the decision to do the EQS was right to localize this car. And uh, also, most of our customers have charging solutions at home, uh, so they were not as dependent on public charging. And then came the phase two where we said, let's come uh, maybe with a bit more uh, family oriented car, which is the EQB, also did quite well. And uh, we were waiting for, at the right time for the EQA. Actually, the EQA is uh, one of the most successful product in our portfolio worldwide. It has done more than 1,30,000 cars, uh, you know, in the last two and a half odd years. So that clearly shows uh, a lot of success for the car. And we wanted to introduce it when we have enough cars to start with. Also, we waited for the facelift because we said that, you know, you just, uh, introduce a car again, you have a successor coming up, the current customers get disappointed. So, we wanted as fresh, as new car to be introduced in India and that's why the EQA is there. So, EQA for sure uh, is our foray into the sub-70, sub-60, uh, sub-70 lakh segment and I think that's, uh, I think for the first time uh, we start coming here. But again, when we configured the product, we said that this cannot be an entry car uh, because uh, you know 70 lakhs is a lot of money uh, I would say in that ballpark so what do we do is we spec up the car so if you see we have actually a Burmester audio sound to memory seat package to heads up display so no compromises when it comes to product configuration the second thing was on the range we also said let's go all out and therefore we gave it 250 plus which means you get a range of more than 500 to 550 kilometers so I think all of this has been clearly strategized but slowly, uh, uh, we need to penetrate uh, the, the transition to EV is not a marathon, you know, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, it takes right. time. Right. And I think we have been saying this continuously for many years, but we believe in the transition and therefore we'll continue to introduce products. But I like how you said that it's not essentially an entry level product and yet it is at the starting level of your electric portfolio. Yeah. Uh, what sort of target audience are you focusing on as far as the EQA is concerned? You know, interestingly, we see uh, a lot of change in demographics. In general, we have a lot of young customers getting into luxury cars and buying them. Uh, we also uh, see, uh, uh, you know, HNI households now. You, you see households with double income uh, exceeding more than uh, one crore. And uh, they have bought a house, maybe now the next logical thing is to again uh, splurge and spend a bit on luxury. Now these uh, youngsters, they also value sustainability because if I go to the food uh, topic, if you look at all the, what they consume, you know, right from the milk to the uh, organically produced uh, stuff at home, uh, I think they're paying a premium. They also want to live a better lifestyle. The quality is different and the kids also are putting pressure because today's schooling teaches a bit more on sustainability and recycling. So uh, I think it's also a matter of pride for them not just to own a Mercedes Benz, but to own a green uh, car, zero uh, emission. And of course, there is also a TCU advantage, you know. Uh, yes, uh, it may be slightly more expensive than its ICE counterpart, but uh, then when you look at uh, a uh, picture of three to four years time, the TCO per month, in fact, is much cheaper to own. So I think it's a very practical solution for a lot of young families, young families uh, to own this car, good range, uh, TCO much lower. At the same time, you do a shift, a big shift, not just into the luxury segment, but also get into with a green number plate. Right. Of course, TCO or total cost of ownership is a very, very important factor, perhaps more important when it comes to electric vehicles across the segment, not yeah. just luxury, but in exactly. other ways. We'll come to that in just a bit. but. You said a younger audience, a more aware audience. Um, what sort of age demography are we looking at? 28 to 32, that's what we feel because these are uh, much uh, younger getting into, uh, you know, uh, they, have, uh, they, they have been working for say 10 odd years now, uh, 8 to 10 years and I think mostly 
as if i look at the salary it is more double income if i look at the uh, you know the young guys who have studied abroad come got into the family business maybe or running an sme uh, i think for them again uh, you know they have some of them even have driven an ev uh, in the us or in uh, uk so they would like to then come back and continue the same lifestyle but could these 28 to 33 year olds also be someone who are either uh, entering into the luxury space or specifically entering into the Mercedes space and in that sense is it more of a challenge then to target this particular age number? No, absolutely right. Uh, you know, most of the people would like to go for the safer bet uh, to a combustion engine, no doubt. But I think the young customers and that's why the age is important, they are not averse to using apps, they are not averse to taking risks uh, in a sense because in EV use, need to plan a bit when you go city to city. I think within the city, be it Delhi, Bombay, uh, these cars with 500 km range, you don't need to bother and if you have a home charging or an office charging, you never ever need to use public charging infrastructure. But when you go intercity, you need to plan a bit. But I think uh, that adaptability is much higher with a younger target audience than an older target audience. But here again, we are also seeing Current luxury car customers who all, many of them say we want an EV but your EV is 1 crore, 1.5 crores, uh, what, what's the uh, options and here I think uh, this also gives them that confidence to get into EV, I get one more Mercedes Benz EQA, maybe drive it for a couple of years, get into the EV uh, world and then maybe shift uh, to a full blown luxury EV as well. So I think for us we need to provide products across the spectrum. This year we have said we will introduce three new EVs, first one is the EQA, two more to come now and one of them would be in the Maybach uh, segment itself. So I think uh, options, product options uh, will definitely also help to grow the market. Right. What is the introduction of the EQA? Uh, potentially hold for a model like say the GLA which in its own right in the combustion engine portfolio it's a fairly popular yeah. model as well uh, or is it uh, a case of you know as long as everything remains within the family all's good at Mercedes Benz? I, I think we need to give customer a choice even in the GLA I'm giving a clean gasoline I'm giving a clean diesel uh, you know both powertrains there it's not only uh, one of them so and, and it's it's nice to for customer to have a choice because some of them buy petrol cars for a reason they buy diesel cars for a reason and they will buy electric for a reason. So for us, uh, it's not a GLA equivalent, but it's in the same segment. It's a different platform. But I think the customer segment is very similar. And uh, for them, it's a choice then uh, about what we have. We don't need to push one powertrain uh, based on any internal topics. Uh, for us, it's very clear. Give the choice. It helps us to grow the market as well because there will be a lot of customers who in the absence of an EV, uh, for them the logical step would be a 1 crore plus EV which is beyond their reach as well. Right. So maybe it makes logical sense. As I said, current customers, uh, mo many Mercedes-Benz customers also, they love the EQS and the EQE, but they say, uh, but why, uh, you know, a bit expensive, should I take that risk? Uh, yes, I think it's a stepping stone. Uh, live a life with an EV for a couple of years and then you are sold yes, out. Essentially, it's about democratizing even the luxury EVs. Exactly. exactly. One take it. Um, Let's just go a little beyond this particular model. How do you see the evolution of the Indian electric vehicle space, especially in the luxury segment, since the time of the EQC and now uh, four or five years uh, down the road? I think uh, there is a lot of awareness to start with, you know, and uh, most of the customers today now, it's part of the consideration set. The only problem is they say the next car would be an EV, let me go with a combustion engine today. And I think, so it's not like it's not in the consideration set, but there are a lot of valid reasons maybe for them to not take the leap of faith and then shift uh, to this powertrain. So I think that's the biggest change that we see on awareness side, consideration side from consumers. But also uh, there has been a lot of questions which has come up, uh, you know, life of the car, battery life. Uh, uh, recyclability or uh, resale value of the car for example so these are propped up which is natural the EV has to yet go through one full life cycle you know so uh, I think it's not fair uh, to start judging uh, based on the perception and therefore uh, once the full life cycle gets over 10 to 15 years then consumers would have a bit more confidence on this overall technology as well right models like say the EQS or perhaps even the EQC in times gone by and the EQB uh, there was a sense that customers who are buying that are customers of Mercedes, existing customers of Mercedes Benz or at least people who own at least one electric yeah, yeah. car. Does that change with the model like this where you have for first sure. time buyers? For sure, because there will be a lot of first time buyers who will come into EV segment. If I look at mass market also, you have many first time buyers buying cars, directly buying an EV. 
uh, I think in the luxury space also you will have. I think uh, our propensity for these younger customers to straight get into EV is much higher than the traditional set of buyers who will always prefer combustion engines to an EV uh, for their own reasons and their own valid reasons. But I think the TCO is also a compelling argument because these young families, uh, you know, have started career. Uh, for, it's not that the 5 to 10,000 rupees a month is going to change the world for them, but it's important and then why not? And then also uh, the young kids, uh, you know, at these families because they want to be dropped in an EV in school, then a, uh, you know, a combustion engine car. It also the mindset is changing. So I think it's a very good opportunity for a new set of buyers who may not have come to Mercedes Benz or to the luxury space, may be thinking that yes, uh, you get everything with this one shot. So as we say, switch on to stand out. <laughs> right. So is it in that sense also a potential volume driver at least for Mercedes Benz electric portfolio in the country? You know, with EVs also, as you earlier asked oh, in the I'm last... Sorry, but is it not about the volumes at all? No, no that's exactly. As you said, uh, you know, uh, the learnings. If you change the volume, you know, we can say with 5% uh, and to be specific, uh, you know, first quarter we had 5 odd percent or H1, we will announce the numbers, we would have a penetration of 5 plus percent, we may be even leading or something. But I don't think that's the biggest take, you know, in a market where you sell 600,000 cars a year in that now, one car extra, five car, I think for us, we have to democratize charging, we have to democratize the... I think collectively as industry, spread awareness uh, because as a responsible corporate citizen, it's also about zero emission mobility and for us, it doesn't matter. That's why we opened up our charging network. We also said that let others come in and charge uh, because this is going to be, as I said, a marathon, right? So, uh, and it's too early to put the cart before the horse, look at the volume and that's a realization. That's the realization at India and at the global level as well that we need to be tactfully flexible. We need to continue combustion engines. End of the day, it's the customer who's going to decide. Uh, and the policy makers because that's also another spectrum because those guys will determine the taxation structure pricing customer will determine whether I don't need to make the leap of faith and and when these two come at a different proportion the acceleration will happen suppose the government says tomorrow there is further increase in combustion engine tax uh, you will suddenly find people all buying EV so right. it's a matter of policy making it's a matter of consumer acceptance so we should not have a target based approach uh, but I think for us it's, it's important that we give options so right. every portfolio every product line will give options right it's very interesting that you uh, also speak about choices uh, in the past the top management of Mercedes-Benz has said that it the company will introduce an entirely electric range in markets where possible. Correct. Uh, there has been a slight change uh, to this where uh, Ola Kalina said recently said that um, the electric only strategy, the focus now also remains on uh, combustion engine vehicles, perhaps the top end ones or, or the mid level ones. So, how do you assess the uh, global sort of slowing of demand for electric vehicles that's in, gradually emerging as a big concern? The sales, the demand and the popularity perhaps isn't growing as it was uh, expected. The reason also I'm asking is because various studies across the world have shown that the initial rush for electric vehicles was propelled by the uh, by people who are very enthusiastic about new technologies. But those people have bought their cars and now it's time for the masses really essentially to go for it. So, you know, there is a lot of learning in these uh, years. Firstly, Let's say, what is the final target picture? The final target picture is carbon neutrality. As a company and, uh, you know, for the countries as well, uh, each country has its own target landscape. India says 2070, EU says 2045. We have to wait and see. Uh, but to reach carbon neutrality, and this doesn't mean just EVs, it means the entire value chain that we are operating uh, to be carbon neutral, we have need to have zero emission mobility. Now, for zero emission mobility, again, uh, there are emission-based targets, right? Uh, we have cafe in India, uh, which doesn't say zero, but it says certain gram per uh, uh, weight of the car, etc. But then here again, to reach there, how do you reach those targets? And for us, uh, it was always clear and it's still clear that EV is the only currently possible solution to have emission-free mobility. Now, uh, of course, uh, I would say that we also need to therefore continue combustion engines because if we don't do that, maybe there is a point of time where the transition may not happen and that not because a customer doesn't want. Geopolitics combined with taxation has a huge role to play in the pricing of EVs because they are expensive technology, uh, much more expensive or twice as expensive than combustion engine I can say right. in many of the cases. And if there is no governmental support when it comes to taxation, for example, in India, you know, uh, the combustion engine cars have a 50% tax, uh, the SUV is compared to the 5% on an EV. Now this 45% arbitrage 
and add the 15% of road tax reduction in India, which is uh, another uh, 60%, it, it takes that arbitrage to 60. If that goes away, EV will be zero penetration, to be honest, right. uh, for any brand. Uh, in that sense, I think, uh, therefore, regulations we cannot influence. Uh, it's based on the macroeconomic geopolitical situation. Customer acceptance is based on price as one of the key factors. But what we can do in this period is, Take away the fear, take away the fear of battery life, take away the fear of residual value. And this, I think we have a role to play. Uh, also set up a charging infrastructure collectively, democratize charging. Because then the ecosystem is developed and at a right time with the right policies, right product portfolio, I think the tipping points will come because there is no option uh, at this stage. For, as far as passenger car mobility is concerned, there is no other option for uh, zero emission mobility. Right, which gets me to my final question. There's a lot of questions, it's actually not my question, but a lot of our readers, a lot of our audience ask us about, they're interested in electric vehicles. You've touched upon it a little while back, but there are questions about range. Uh, there are questions about uh, charging infrastructure in the country. And I'm talking specifically yeah, yeah, about yeah. India. Then there are questions about the resale value and TCO, to, uh, total cost of ownership. Can you shed a bit of light on all of these aspects? I mean, uh, what? why should I buy I'll simplify it further. Why should I buy this car and not the GLA? I think that uh, it's very valid. It's very valid question. So let me start from the range. Uh, as I said, one of the criteria for us to introduce a car was it should be plus 500 because then city driving is taken care of only intra-city one needs to bother because we have also seen that 80% of the charging is done at home or office, not at public charging. So, in that sense, predominantly when you buy the car, if you are able to get a small plug-in uh, system, because you don't need any complicated, even a 5 kilowatt, 10 kilowatt, you can easily charge overnight. So, you never ever need to go to a gas station, fuel station, technically. When you go long distances, the 500 kilometer will take care of your Delhi Jaipur runs or your, uh, I would say, many other cities, uh, the Bombay Pune or the frequent runs. But if you are going to Bombay to Goa, you may need a pit stop, but then you anyway need a pit stop for a coffee and you can use, uh, charge them in superchargers in 35 to 45 minutes. It's developing. Intra-city travel needs a bit of planning. You need an app. We have an app which we have aggregated more than 1,000 charges from different uh, players and it will further develop. So, uh, these cars have OTA updates, apps will be updated, so it will happen. So, that's on the charging side. I don't think that's the bigger issue. The bigger issue is then coming to this uh, resale value which is driven by the life of battery. Our muscle memory is all based on mobile phones because we feel that a phone lasts three to four years. At the end of three, four years, the battery starts dropping, right? So you need to charge it much more often like a laptop or anything else, which is, but these are different technologies. Lithium ion batteries, they last. Uh, and, uh, you know, in a combustion engine, I gave a warranty only for three years. Nobody questions whether this will last for 15 years because we know we have experienced combustion engines. Here we are giving a warranty of eight years. Still, there is a question whether it will last for 15 years. But clearly, you know, we have done enough research and there are enough studies available where these batteries, the state of charge will drop by 10 to 15 percent over 10, 15 years. So it is as good as a combustion engine in terms of life. And now you extrapolate at the end of 15 years. So today you buy a combustion engine in India, uh, any car, uh, and the cost is 100. Uh, 65 goes to the government, right? Because of uh, uh, GST and exactly. because of registration tax. Right. What you are buying is 35 bucks worth of content. Now you buy an EV, only 5 goes to the government. 95 bucks you are buying in terms of content, product substance, in terms of technology and in terms of batteries and others. So you have a 35 content versus a 95 content. And let's take this content at the end of 15 years and depreciate. Uh, let's assume we scrap it. I think it's no brainer that an EV should get much better value, uh, you know, at the end of the life. So, but this is, has to happen. This cycle has not yet happened. So, there is a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. And therefore, when you end of four years, when a customer wants to sell, there is an anxiety. What we have done with the EQA is we said with our Star Agility program, we give a residual va ga uh, value guarantee of 67%. This is exactly same as GLA. So you buy a GLA, at the end of four years, you get 67% back. You buy an EQA, you will get it back. Now let me convert this to EMI terms because that was your question. Why should I buy an EQA instead of a GLA? Though I'm happy to sell both. As I said, I have the full portfolio. I was portfolio. wondering if you're putting down the yeah. GLA. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah. Uh, you know, as I said, for us, it's about options. But from a TCO perspective, the EQA will be more expensive than GLA. So for a customer, initially you may think, fine, should I still go for an expensive technology? But let me now explain. When you turn into EMIs, both of them will have a down payment of say 14 odd lakhs, 
द ई क्यू ए विल हैव ए फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज फॉर ई एम आई से सिक्सटी एट थाउजेंड कम्पेयर टू द सिक्सटी थ्री थाउजेंड इन आई जी एल ए आई एम गिविंग अ वेरी प्रैक्टिकल फोर ईयर ओनरशिप बट वेन आई नाउ एड द फ्यूल कॉस्ट ऑफ ए गैसोल इन एन जी एल ए एंड वेन आई एड द कॉस्ट ऑफ चार्जिंग इवन पब्लिक चार्जिंग विच इज एक्सपेंसिव द डेल्टा इज फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज अ मंथ ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट आई एड मेंटेनेंस कॉस्ट टू थ्री थाउजेंड एंड देन आई एम नॉट इवन ब्रिंगिंग डेप्रिसिएशन डू इट बिकॉज ई वीज एंजॉय एक्सेलरेटेड डेप्रिसिएशन फॉर बिजनेसमैन एंड एस एम ईज टेक्निकली पर मंथ वन कैन स्टार्ट सेविंग फाइव टू सेवन थाउजेंड रुपीज अ मंथ इरस्पेक्टिव ऑफ डेप्रिसिएशन एंड दैट गोज अपू टू लैक फोर्टी थाउजेंड इन अ फोर ईयर पीरियड सो प्योर टी सी ओ ई वी इज ग्रेट बट येस इट नीड्स दैट लीप ऑफ फेथ इट ऑल्सो नीड्स दैट कैलकुलेशन ए बिट इफ आई एम गोइंग आउटसाइड द सिटी बट देन वॉट यू एंजॉय इज द ग्लेस यू एंजॉय द ग्रीन नंबर प्लेट यू एंजॉय यू आर सस्टेनेबल दिस इज अ मैसेज यू गिव एंड वॉट काइंड ऑफ अ वर्ल्ड वी वॉन्ट टू लिव फॉर आर चिल्ड्रेन सो वी आर सेल्स प्रोड्यूस ऑल कास्ट and that's also a bit of ironic right that we produce combustion engine as well as evs so we don't want to put the other i think it's a transitory period but i think we are absolutely convinced that emission free mobility there is no other option we need to get into evs right well as long as it stays in the family and the choice is really with the customers who are essentially uh, the deciding factor for the success or the lack of it for any car or for that matter any technology that remains the best right santosh yes Thank you for Pleasure insights. Pleasure talking to you. Thanks Absolutely a lot. Very nice conversation. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching this episode. Do not forget to miss our full drive review of the car behind me, or should I say, the electric car behind me. But for now, that's all the time we have. Thank you for watching.